The impacts of climate change are obvious in the Arctic. The region is warming at roughly twice the rate of the global average. One recent study published in the journal Nature Climate Change suggested the effects are so severe the region is now shifting to a completely different climate. So what does that mean for the wider world? Henry Burgess is the head of the United Kingdom's Arctic office. Henry Burgess, welcome to Global Science. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Can I start by asking, what impact does the Arctic have on the overall climate change of our planet? Uh, that's a really, really good question. Um, people often think about the Arctic as being a very static, sort of fixed system, but actually it's not. It's incredibly dynamic and it is, to all intents and purposes, the air conditioning unit of the planet. When you think about all the heat that the, that the world ab absorbs uh, around the equator, that heat is shifted to the Arctic through air currents, through ocean currents, and is there kind of cooled. Uh, and uh, that plays a really important part in regulating the temperature of the Earth. Uh, and the warming that we're seeing in the Arctic, kind of much more than other parts of the world, uh, is really significant because it's affecting the health of the planet as a whole. So if we get more specific in terms of those changes we're seeing in the Arctic, um, what are scientists noticing? There's an enormous range of change in the Arctic. You can't find any system in the Arctic which isn't isn't responding to to this man-made climate change. Um, the amount of sea ice in the Arctic is is decreasing rapidly. It's going down by about thirteen percent every decade in terms of the kind of the extent of the of the sea ice, but also the age of the sea ice is decreasing. So in the past, you would have sea ice that would form one year and would go on to the next and would build up and up and up and become multi-year ice. And that's the kind of ice that walruses or polar bears or other kind of significant creatures in the, in the Arctic depend on. And that's decreased by 90% uh, in the last few decades, really dramatic changes. And we're seeing changes in permafrost, the frozen parts of the soil. Uh, we're seeing reductions in, in glaciers, in Greenland, enormous change kind of across, right across the whole of the Arctic. And that's having a knock-on effect uh, with the species of the Arctic, the fish uh, and the whole of the ecosystem, the whole of the food chain. Now you talk about, you know, 90% in the last decade. So I, I'm suggesting that, I'm guessing that that suggests that this rate of change is accelerating. That's right. It certainly seems to be. Um, you know, the, the rate of warming in the Arctic is twice what it is in the rest of the world. Uh, so uh, we have a research station in uh, Svalbard, uh, in the northern part of, of Norway, an archipelago north of Norway, uh, and then in that part of the, of the Arctic. Uh, temperatures there have warmed by four degrees uh, in the last 50 years. That's really dramatic change. That's, that's mind-boggling change, really. Uh, there was a fjord, or there is a fjord, outside our research station, and that used to be frozen over completely in the winter. And 20 years ago, you could ski across, you could go across on a skidoo, uh, and that's now open water all winter, uh, to all intents and purposes. And that's change that people have seen in sort of half a lifetime. It's really significant change. So how concerned about all of this should we be? We are kind of very right to be concerned. These changes are absolutely unprecedented and there's no doubt that they're being caused by uh, human activity uh, as well as the natural processes. But the human activity is over, over, of overriding importance. And you know, what we're seeing are changes that are affecting the Arctic but that have an impact in the wider world as well. And there is a kind of real feedback going on here. So the warming that's happening in the globe is affecting the Arctic disproportionately. So that's warming more than the other parts of the world. And in terms of that impact, uh, that Arctic warming is having a return effect on the world as a whole, because it's affecting that, that air conditioning, that, that global cooling system. Um, and we're just beginning to think about and find out more about how these changes in the Arctic are having measurable impacts on the weather and the climate in the mid-latitudes. Uh, and that's a really important area. So the IPCC in its recent report said there is definitely potential for climatic changes in the Arctic to have weather and climatic impacts in the mid-latitudes. And for countries like the UK, which is the nearest neighbour to the Arctic, that's a really significant issue. Right, so not only is it like the canary in the coal mine, but what happens there is going to have a really significant impact on what happens everywhere else on the planet. 
Very much so. Very much so. I mean, thinking about it from a from a, a UK perspective, you know, when you think about uh, fishing stocks, when you think think about shipping, uh, migratory birds, uh, pollution, plastic pollution in particular, um, all kind of security and governance issues, all of those are affected by what will essentially be uh, a whole new. Uh, ocean that's only a few thousand kilometers north of the UK uh, in 20 or 30 years time, a seasonally ice-free ocean in the in the summer. That's really significant. Uh, we haven't had a new ocean, a new sea like that uh, near the UK for 10, 20,000 years when the North Sea opened um, uh, before. So this is really, really significant. Uh, and that's without the changes that you can also, that we will also see in the ecosystem, uh, in the fish stocks and the other and the other things that, are, that make the Arctic so important to the, to the world. Mm, what kind of scientific research is being done? You know, how, how do we know what we know? Yeah, very much so. I mean, the, the Arctic has been, a, uh, has been a site for really good international research for, for many decades, uh, and that's, that's particularly true now. Um, there are uh, national efforts um, amongst different countries uh, to understand the Arctic through ships and planes and research stations like the one that we have in, in Svalbard. Um, and then there are large-scale international projects and cooperation to understand the Arctic. Increasingly, we're finding that the kind of the most difficult questions, the biggest science questions about the Arctic, really need that kind of international approach. Uh, the coronavirus pandemic has reached every corner of the globe. I'm curious as to how it's impacted these research efforts. Uh, it's been very, very significant uh, and it's had a huge impact on the ability of many researchers to conduct their research in the in the Arctic. Um, for our programs, it's had a, a really serious effect and it's meant that many people have not been able to carry out their field work uh, this summer. Uh, and that's really significant because we're dependent on long-term data sets, long-term observations to make sure that we can be really consistent in our measurements uh, and that we can tell this story about change in the Arctic in a, in a really strong and, a, and robust way. Um, other expeditions have been able to go ahead. So this Mosaic expedition, the German expedition in the, uh, in the high Arctic, has gone ahead with very strict quarantine uh, protocols and uh, approaches. That's, that's been very successful and has gone ahead as, as planned. One of the interesting things that we're beginning to see is um, a closer connection between researchers who would have travelled to the Arctic and the local communities, uh, particularly the indigenous people that live in the Arctic. There are four million people that live north of the Arctic Circle. Uh, about one in ten of those uh, are people from indigenous communities, indigenous peoples. Um, and one of the things that we've seen in some of our programmes is actually the researchers from the UK that would have gone to the Arctic, they are establishing uh, uh, and strengthening their connections with the local communities, particularly the indigenous communities where they exist in the Arctic. And they're folding them into their program. They're empowering them to conduct the research, to maintain the instrumentation, uh, to have those real kind of links. And that's a fantastic way of connecting what you might think of as Western science, together with indigenous ways of knowing, traditional and local knowledge, and combining those in a, in a really useful way. And that's something that's long overdue in the Arctic. Too often those, those ways of knowing have been, have been separated. Uh, but this is a one way, perhaps a small way, but an important one of, of bringing those ways of knowing together and making sure that this is a, a, a really joint effort. Now, if there was a key message um, that it's important for people to understand uh, about climate change, what would that be? I think it's important to understand that kind of the Arctic is uh, a, a prime example of where climate change, the, the real significant impact of climate change is, is being felt. Sometimes we think about climate change as, as a very incremental process. So people will talk about um, millimetres of, of sea level rise per year. And you know that's important, but it's hard to quite visualise it in, in, that, in that way. When you go to the Arctic, you can see the dramatic changes that, are, that climate change is causing, that human-induced climate change is causing. You can see collapsed glaciers. You can see areas of sea that used to have ice on them and don't anymore. You can see 
the impact on fish species that are in one place now when they used to be in another. You can see the impact on communities that have been affected by avalanches, by snowfall that they didn't used to be. Um, and it's a real kind of dramatic impact. Um, and it's really affecting people's lives as they as they live in the Arctic. And in turn, it will affect our lives in the whole of the rest of the world. It's a fascinating subject. You you talk about it and it brings it to life and it really has such a character. I love that kind of dynamic um, aspect to it. And I think it's one of those places that will never cease being interesting. It will always have new things to discover about it and all the more reason for us to, uh, to take care of it and the planet. Thank you so much, um, Henry, for your time. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Remember to hit subscribe for our regular videos. And while you're here, check out our past episodes. <laughs>